Hi everyone, welcome to the second video of Unity Pinball. Now, what we need to do is we're going to create the flippers and we're going to create the spring in this one. Okay? They're a little bit fiddly because they have a whole lot of settings to them and they have a whole lot of scripts that you need to add in there. But, like with the ball, the backdrop and the borders, we're actually going to use just really basic objects. And before I continue to anything, I'm going to start organizing my objects in the hierarchy. I've already got a fair few there. When we start making all the objects on our board, there's going to be a whole lot more. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create some categories to put in the cubes or the board. Okay, and I'm going to rename some of them from plane and sphere and cube. So what we're going to do first of all, this first cube up here, okay, I'm going to rename to top boundary. Okay, and it's as simple as you can either right click and rename. So top boundary. Or what I can do is click up here and click F2, which I, I prefer doing personally. So left boundary, right boundary. Okay, I'm going to rename plane to floor. Sphere is going to be ball. Directional light and main camera, they seem pretty um, self-explanatory, so I'm going to leave it as is. Now I'm going to create a category to put all these things into. Okay, so I'm going to go create game object, create empty, rename that one to board, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in all the boundary and the floor into that. So floor into board, okay, top, right, left boundary can go in there as well. I don't need to worry about them anymore so they can stay in there, and that's it. That's game over for them. So let's start with the flippers. They're quite easy. We're going to create a cube. We're going to resize it and we're going to add a few things to it. So firstly, let's create a cube. So game object, other, cube. Okay, set the Y to 0.5 again so it's just sitting on top. Once you've got that, let's resize it to something that's probably a feasible flipper. That's about right. I'm going to add the black material to this one. So just grab your black material shove it on there all right and she's ready to become a flipper now what we need to do is quickly before we add the script for a flipper we need to add what's called a hinge joint okay and what this hinge joint does is every object has a center okay and right now what happens is when you press a button it rotates this flipper so right now if we were if we were to rotate it it would rotate like this which isn't exactly how we want to rotate. We want to rotate off this back side so it goes around. Okay. So what we have to do is add this hinge joint. So it's pretty easy to add, just like a rigid body. Go up to add component, physics, hinge joint. And you'll notice we've also got a rigid body, we've also got a hinge joint and so forth. All right. Now before we set up anything here, we're gonna add the script. So go to your scripts folder on your assets. Grab your paddle controller script, and what you're going to do is just like a material, you'll drag it on top of your cube. Make sure you don't drag it onto the plane, otherwise you'll get some very interesting results or errors. Okay, and you should notice if we have a look down here, there's the paddle controller script. So it's added properly, and we can set it all up and make it into the left flipper. What you might notice too is that this little orange arrow just appeared. Now that's pretty. That's actually the hinge joint. Okay, that tells us which way the hinge joint is pointing and where it sits on the object. Firstly, we need to change two things. We need to put this hinge joint up the back, pointing upwards. Okay, once we've got that, okay, we can start adding all the different values for the script. So firstly, let's set up this hinge joint. So let's go down to our settings here. Okay, as for the anchor, we need to change the x-axis to minus 0 0.5 and you'll notice that that's put it up the back okay we now need to face that up so that's as easy as changing the x-axis to 0 the y value to 1 there you go you'll see it's pointing upwards and what we're going to do is change back on the anchor is y to 0 if I rotate around you'll see there it is that's exactly where we want it and it's going to rotate around that point that's perfect. A couple more things we have to change. Let's scroll down in the hinge joint. 
we need to use limits. And what we're going to do, we're essentially making a fake spring. And with this spring, we don't want it to bounce too much. So we're going to change these bounce values. Say so the min bounce is going to be 0 0.02 and the max bounce is going to be 0 0.02. Okay, so that means when it bounces around after it moves, it's going to be very, very subtle. Okay, so it will look like it's sitting on a spring, but it'll be a very powerful spring for that matter. Now we have to change the paddle controller script up. Okay, the rest position, leave that at zero. That tells you where it starts. The pressed position for the left hand side is minus 40. The strength is 10,000 and the damper is 25. Now this input button name, left paddle, leave it as is. Unfortunately it's not going to work at the moment but leave that as it is. Now what you can do is rotate your cube so it's actually in the position of a paddle. All right. Now the last thing we have to do is change the mass of the rigid body. So what we can do is change it to different values. Let's try 20 for the moment. Okay, because if it's not heavier than the ball, then this is going to go flopping around when the ball hits into it. So leave that at 20 and we'll see how that goes. We can change it later on. Now, we could do that whole process again and create the right hand flipper. Or we could duplicate it with Control D. Okay and then flip it around. Let's flip it upside down. Now you'll notice the arrow is pointing the wrong way. We'll fix that, that's pretty easy. Come down to your hinge joint, change the axis to minus one, and there you go, it's up the right way. All right, the only thing that we have to change about this one here is we have to change press to 40 and input button name to right panel. And there's our two flippers done. So before we continue, I think we should name them, put them in a category. So that's your right flipper. This is the left flipper. And I'm going to create, you know what, I'm not going to call them flippers, I'm going to call them paddles. Yeah. Call them paddles everywhere else. I'm going to create an empty object. Call that paddles. And that's where they're going to go. So there you go. So our paddles are finished. I've put them in left paddle and right paddle. Now, as I said before, they're not going to work. Now, the reason they're not going to work is because the input button names are currently left paddle and right paddle. There's no such thing in our project at the moment. So we actually have to set that up. And it's not too hard, thankfully. So what we're going to do now is set that up before we do the spring. And what we're going to do is go to Edit. You're going to go down to Project Settings. Click on Input. Alright. And you know what? I've already set them up. That was a bit silly of me. Anyway, you'll find that you've got them as well. So what we're going to have here is you've got three buttons. Okay, One's called Left Paddle, Right Paddle and Pull. What I've done is I've set them up so you can press the left button or you can press mouse zero, which is your left click. Okay. Then we've got the right, which is your right arrow. And then you've got mouse one, which is your right click. And then pull is for the spring. So we can either press down or we can middle click for that. So not scroll, click. All right. So since I've already set them up, let's get onto the spring. All right, so what I'm going to do is duplicate this boundary here, move it across so we've got like a tunnel going. Okay, and just see if the ball fits inside of it first. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, now let's start editing a few things. Okay, we first of all need a gap for the uh, ball to exit out of, so let's make that gap. Okay. Let's resize this one so it fits a bit better. I'm going to make that gap a bit bigger. Mm, a bit more.
yeah, that looks pretty good. And lastly, I'm going to make the little pull spring in here. Okay, so all I'm going to do for that is I'm just going to make a cube. Okay, set its Y to 0.5, remember? And I'm just going to put this cube. Now, you're going to have to make sure the cube is small enough to fit in that gap there. Okay, from there, let's resize the plane. So it fits under. And we're good to go. Okay, from that point, we need to set up the pool. Okay, and the pool's not too hard. Okay, this is going to be where we put everything, on this little cube here. Okay, it all belongs to that. So firstly, let's grab the pull string, spring, and drag it on top of the cube, and watch the right-hand inspector. There it is. We need to change a fair few of these settings here. Okay, the input button name pull is perfectly fine, because that was set up before. Distance is going to be 1.8, much smaller than 50. Speed, 1.5. Ball, leave that as is for the moment, and then power, we set to 1500. So 1,500. Now this ball, what that actually is, is the cube needs to know what the ball is. At the moment, it doesn't know what the ball is. Okay, so there's two things we need to do right now. Firstly, we need to put the ball inside this and replace this none. Okay, so we can click on this little round circle here. Okay. And go to C, and there's the ball. Simply double click on that. And there you go, the ball's there. There's another way you can do that as well. Okay, the second way you can do that. Okay, see I've reset it back to none. You can grab the ball up in your hierarchy. Notice I've lost the settings. I need to go back to the cube. You click and drag it on top of that. So there's two ways you can do that. Pick which one you prefer. It's up to you how you use them. Yeah, I'm going to move these back a little bit. All right. So, what have I forgotten? Ah, yes. One last thing we have to do. We have to set the ball to a ball tag. Okay. Now, what I mean by that is if you go up here on the right-hand side, you've got to, every object has a tag. Okay, and we need to set this to a ball tag. It's pretty simple. Click on untagged. Set it to ball. Okay, that's something I've already set up. That's fine to go. So, from there, this should work. There's one last thing I want to do, however. Let's add another cube. Okay, 0.5. Let's rotate in 45 degrees. Scale them up a tiny bit. And this boy is our corner piece. Now, all of this is customizable. If you find that the ball's moving too slow, you can up the gravity. If you find the flippers are too slow, you can up the power, the strength. If you find this is moving too slow, you can up the speed, you can up the power. It's up to you which one, how you want to set it up. So what I'm going to do right now, let's test her out. Let's push play. Flippers are working. And the pull's working perfectly. Yep. That's looking really good. Now, one last thing that we need to change, sorry. On these flippers, we need to change the collision detection. We need to change these to continuous. Okay? Same for both. If you set these to continuous, you're good to go. And that is it for this tutorial. Okay, the next tutorial, we're going to have a look at getting the bounces in there and getting the out of bounds down here so we can restart the ball every single time. So save it up, and I'll see you in the next video.